Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Well, it's winter time. Should I be watering my trees and shrubs? Well, yes and no. What gives? Stay tuned and I'll clear up the mystery for you. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. It is flipping cold out here. It's a little breezy. It's winter. Should I be watering my trees? Well, yes and no. So which is it? Am I just being wishy-washy? No, actually, there's some factors you need to know to make a decision of whether or not you need to water your trees and shrubs. And there are certain kinds of trees and shrubs that can benefit. And there's a couple conditions you got to know about. The first thing you got to think about is temperature. So you can see here, the temperature here today is right at freezing. But the soil temperature is what we're really talking about when it comes to watering or not. And you can see right here, I took a little soil thermometer, placed it in the ground, and what do you know? It's right at 40 degrees. And that's something you need to know about soil temperature and air temperature. Whatever trend the temperature is going, let's suppose it's now cooling down for the season, it's fall. Well, those nighttime temperatures, the air temperatures can drop very quickly but the soil temperature is gonna lag behind and stay warmer for a lot longer. Inversely, the same is true in the spring. The air temperature gets really nice, you're out enjoying things, and you're gonna go plant your tomatoes in really cold soil because that soil has not warmed up yet, it's lagging in temperature. And that's all to say right now, you've got to know the soil temperature to know whether or not even to consider watering. So why do you need to water trees and shrubs in the winter anyway. I mean, look at them. They look pretty sparse, especially if they're deciduous. There's nothing happening here. Well, don't be fooled. You're looking at the dormant part of the tree, the, the part of it that's uh, visible, but there's a lot going on below the soil line. Here's what's happening. You think about this. Uh, roots continue to develop until the ground is uh, frozen in many varieties and cultivars of trees and shrubs for a couple reasons. Number one, more anchorage is being, um, being accomplished during that time. Main uh, root structures are forming to make the tree more stable. It's acquiring new territory, so to speak. It is uh, broadening the area that it can access moisture and nutrients. So that's all happening while it's not actively interacting with the top growth and the sugar transfer between the, the leaves and all that when everything's green. The other thing that's happening, and this is very key, many people don't know about this, but now you will, is there's a lot of root hair development that's going on during this time. Root hair? Yeah, it's, it's a real thing. This is those real fine little fibers you see. Sometimes they're very matted. Uh, and what this is doing, what the tree is doing, is exponentially increasing the surface area of root so that it has much more access to moisture and accompanying nutrients. So all that's got to happen during the winter. And that's going on while we're warm in our house or in our shop or whatever. So that's why you got to keep water there. Now let's talk about a couple of categories of plantings that are really at risk for winter damage from lack of moisture. Well, the first one's not a cultivar, it's not a type, it's not a category other than this. Those plantings that were planted recently in the previous growing se uh, season or just before fall came on. I like to do transplanting during the fall uh, to allow winter development of the root system, but they don't have a full root system in place yet since they were transplanted and many times root pruned before they were uh, put in the transplant pots and all that. So you've got to help them along. They can't do all this work themselves if it's really dry and as you know, winter, cold air, really has a hard time. It cannot hold much moisture. You know that from the static electricity in your house and dry skin and all that. So it's not getting moisture from the air. And if there's not moisture in the ground because winds are taking it off, or there's not much moisture because of snow or rain or mulch cover, all that, then it's up to you to take care of that investment. And you'll be really glad you did when it comes around to that warm season again and things really take off because of that root development. So the first thing is just transplants 
take good care of them. Give them lots of mulch too. Mulching can never go wrong. Well, the second category that is really um, at risk are evergreens. And if you think about it, it's really simple. Evergreens are much more active for a longer time in the season. They're still doing a lot of work above ground. Things are active. Sure, they go through different phases and when new needles are generated, but there's a metabolism that is actively happening. And if you think about the way evergreens grow in nature, a lot of times that's not how we treat them in our yardscape plantings. So in nature, you see them in stands, in clusters, in groups. Well, if you know the economics of buying evergreens, at least out in the mountain west where we are of the United States, I can't afford to buy a whole stand of them. Uh, I'd rather buy a table saw or maybe a new truck or something. You know what I'm saying? They can get very expensive quickly, and I guess that depends on where your priorities are. But my point being that you generally see them in smaller areas or in solitary plantings. Well, that's really hard on the tree, and here's why. In cluster plantings, there's wind protection, there's shading that's happened, rain that comes is held longer in the surface of the tree as well in the ground below it. Snow is trapped and feeds into the, to the soil slower over a period of time. Also, think about this. When you've walked in the forest the last time where there are evergreens, what's all over the ground? All those needles, right? Well, there's a lot of reasons a tree's doing that, but one of the things it does accomplish is soil conditioning and moisture and nutrient retention. But many of our plantings, they're kind of out there bare by themselves, and we put these trees into a stress situation. Now, when this happens and the tree is getting direct sunlight on these warm uh, winter days where it's really still outside, the sun comes out, or when you have prevailing winds that hit the trees, you can run into what's called desiccation. And desiccation is when the tree dries out and the root system cannot supply the needed moisture and nutrients to the top of the tree. And what you see is dieback in the tree, starting at the tips of the needles on branches and then working back to the trunk and then down. And you see here in this picture that is uh, courtesy or was supplied by Colorado State University, you can see this tree, even though it's in the prime growing time in this lush green area, it's kind of solitary. It's by itself. Uh, and the previous winter, it suffered from desiccation. There was a lot of wind uh, around that and sunlight. And you can see the dieback and it didn't rejuvenate when it's that beautiful growing time. That's desiccation. So you got to watch that. And that means additional waterings and covering the ground with you can with mulch or other organic materials to, to mimic the growing conditions as much as possible for your evergreen trees. And even for your deciduous trees, the ones that drop their leaves and they're sitting there looking like they're dead asleep. You know, if it's been dry for a while, it's been really windy, um, you haven't gotten moisture coming at you and it's not, uh, and it's not forecasted. What's the harm in giving them a little bit of a drink? They'll thank you for it as a protectment of your investment. Hey, if you've got any insights on all of this, we'd love to hear it. Go to the um, comments below. And oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. There's also a link down below where you can get a uh, little temperature or a little soil thermometer yourself. Uh, and they're very inexpensive, but you can do that uh, rather than don't take out your candy thermometer. Um, the, your kitchen partner will be upset with you and it won't work anyway. If you found this video to be helpful, won't you like it? And better yet, won't you subscribe to our channel? And when you do, be sure to ring that bell because you'll be notified immediately, approximately every Friday when a new video episode comes out on the shop, the home, truck life, Maggie's Kitchen, and great product reviews for the home and the garden. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay going to get the watering hose.